very important interview here that I hope you guys listen to is we're going to go through a lot of things that I heard last summer when the big uh, tire shortages and everything else was going on. And we're talking to the man who would actually know here. I met Irish Saunders last year at Oswego Speedway. He has been with Hoosier Tire since 1976 when he was out on the dock unloading tires. So 43 years he has been there. He is the business unit, unit manager for off-road and oval asphalt. Of course, Mike Silliman is the guy here in town who handles more of, of the stuff that we do locally. So let's find out what's been going on with Hoosier Tire. And uh, I got some st- things that you guys told me that I'm going to ask Irish and get his thoughts on as well. So let's head over to the main spot in Hoosier. That is in South Bend. Actually, the place is in Lakeville. How we doing, man? I'm doing good, Doug. How you doing? Doing very well. Sounds like we're getting ready to go this year. How are things looking right now for Hoosier? You know what? Things, uh, things are looking very promising. Let's put it that way. Um, you know, out of all my years of being at Hoosier, I've, in two, uh, 2022, I've never seen this many tires produced in our facility or sold in our facility. But I do think that, you know, it, it's uh, kind of like maybe the toilet paper shortage, yep, Doug, yep. you know, where, where everybody's like, oh, well, geez, there's, there's, no there's three right paper. rears there. <laughs> yeah, I want to buy all three of them. You know, I don't want to get caught with my pants down, literally, right? Mm-hmm. So, yeah, case, so yeah. you know, I mean, it's, uh, it's, a, uh, it's a case where I think it's going to get better. I think things are, are going to calm down a little bit for 2023. Um, but I think, you know, it's almost like, you know, like you're a kid, you know, just eat what's on your plate. Don't take more than you need. Right. Gotcha. Because that's, that's kind of where I think the situation got to last year. Yeah. Cause if you were, they were on the outside, this is the, some of the, one of the big numbers that I was surprised at. You actually manufactured more tires in 2022 than 2021. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. By, by probably, I want to say 50 to 80,000 more. Really? Yeah. Well, how many does yeah, your manufacturer if you've added them all up? Because obviously, and you can see from the graphic we've got there, they do tires for all kinds of stuff that you probably don't even know about. How many tires yeah, do we manufacture? There's probably, well, there's going to be close to a million tires that we'll produce. Okay. You know, so ten percent more, basically, somewhere in that range. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Exactly. Why? And, and we're you know we're we're running that plant right now. We we've got a uh, seven days a week right now, um, twenty four hours a day. We run the plant, and uh, they're knocking it out right now with production. But, you know, Doug, here's the thing that that's happened. You know, back in the day, you used to race, you know, until, let's say, October, right? And then you'd give you November, December, January, February, March, and, and sometimes April. So six months, five to six months to build inventory. Well, now with Not live more. streaming and everything, <laughs> yeah. they're, they're racing year-round. Yeah. I mean, it just, I mean, you can turn on Flow Racing and you can watch a race every every day of the week, yes. you know? So, so that's... Um, you know that that's part of the part of the thing. They're racing so much more now. You know, when COVID came out, you know there wasn't nothing to do with lockdown. Race tracks was like one of the first things that people got out to do, and we created some new race fans and we created some new racers, and uh, they're just you know just carrying on. So how did this happen? Did it just happen gradually, like you said? Somebody goes and I need a right rear. I'll go. I got three. Well, just was it just that simple? Well, yeah, I'll tell you a lot of it, Doug. You know, we, we, it's like, uh, it's like, it's a piece of pie, right? You want every distributor of all of our distributors to get a piece of that pie. So we were allocating tires to our distributors, but some of our distributors was not allocating to the dealers per se. So the dealers might have four sets of street stock tires sitting there and a street stock guy comes up and says, Oh, how many of those street stock tires you got? I got four sets. Well, you know what? I'll buy them all. I'll take them all because I don't want to get short. And, and that that was part of the reason. They just weren't, you know, I don't want to say they weren't being smart, but, I mean, they just they just, they just, just had to pay attention to what was really going on. No, and I think your analogy about the toilet paper shortage is realistically spot on because even though I don't need those, the perception is that they're not going to be there next week, so I better buy them now. Yeah, absolutely, Doug, that, and that happened. That happened 100%. And from a business standpoint, I would imagine that's good news for Hoosier, right? Well, it, it is. You know, it is. But I'll tell you the crazy thing about it right now. There's been, you know, the help, getting help, paying help. We're paying help more than we ever have to starting starting pay at Hoosier. Um, you know, raw materials, you know, textiles, um, yeah. polymers. Yeah. I mean, all this stuff is going through the roof. I mean, it's crazy. I mean, we've had... And from 2022 to 2023, probably about a 35% increase in raw material costs, which is huge. 
and that's why you see the tires going up. So how much more, in general, I know you can't say because every tire is a little bit different. What are we looking at? Maybe 10, 20 percent increase from last year, something like that. You're, you're going to see. You're going to see 10 plus. You know, if you, plus. you know, okay. I would say 10 to 15 is what the depending on what tire it was. You know, yeah, and the demand, and what it's and all going that to stuff. Up. Yeah, because that is yep. it, it is supply and demand economics at its at its purest form right here for something Absolutely. like racing tires. All right, here's some of the things that I heard last year, and I already talked to, uh, uh, to Irish about this, so I kind of know where we're going. I heard that some of these tires were, like, literally days old, and they were creating problems. They didn't sit on the shelf long enough? That is 100% correct. So, you know, normally myself, I like to see a tire at least have, and, and we don't want to use the word cure time, but we want to use shelf life, which okay. actually, you know, gets all the molecules from the, from the rubber, it just kind of links everything back together again, makes it a little tougher. So, you know, I like to see two to three weeks of shelf life per tire. Where that we were having, we were building tires on a, I mean, I remember Arca tires for Pocono, we were building them on a Tuesday, and we were running them on a Thursday. Wow. It was absolutely crazy. And, and the tires weren't reacting the way they should. What did they do? Because they didn't have a long enough shelf. They were wearing way wearing. quick. Okay. Like, super quick wear. Oh, super quick. Okay, not just a little bit, but super quick. Yep, yep, yep. It was like a tire that you maybe would have gotten 80 laps out of. You were maybe getting 60 laps out of it. This okay, now. so about 25%, somewhere in there. 25%, Was yep, that? Yep. Okay, and obviously that was just trying to keep up, or how did that happen in the first trying, place? Trying to keep up, trying to keep the demand. You know, I mean, you got, you know, if you, if you go on Hoosiers' website and you look at it, I mean, there's just so Hoosier many tire. different tires com. that we make. You know, yep, yep. Yeah, you're seeing so them the right there on the too, so. Oh, it, it's great. I mean, from, from pro street tires to road race tires to, you know, to, to oval asphalt, oval dirt, off-road. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's just, there's just so many tires. Carding, quarter yeah. midgets, I mean. Yeah, my daughter ran those in her in her micro-rod. So, you know. mic rod. <laughs> yeah. Yep, yep. She was happy so the first time so she much. wore one out. <laughs> <laughs> she, and, she was driving. And, you know, Doug, we're, we're trying to make it to where, we we take care of everybody and we have to you know move things around and and you know i mean we've we've went ahead and consolidated a lot of stuff so doug for example let's say that i don't put this into perspective as a donut maker right so if he makes nothing but cake donuts all day long that's all he makes Mm -hmm. he can pump out a lot of cake donuts right but when you got to make cake donuts and you make glaze and you make long johns and you make strawberry filled you know So, so everything, it slows the process down, and it slows the production down. So we've tried to allocate things to, uh, or not allocate, but liquidate things to where, you know, and consolidate to where we've got um, not as many choices, right? Gotcha. And, you know, most majority of our business for oval asphalt and, and dirt is tire rules where everything, it doesn't matter how fast you go. It's just things just got to be consistent, and drivers have to race on things that they feel comfortable racing on, Right. And, you know, we can go back to the story that I told you earlier about Bentley Warren, you know. I'll never forget this real quick story, Doug, that when we were up there testing, and it was in the 80s, and primarily the whole field was on Goodyear's, and we went there, and if you were 17 twos back in the day, you were pretty good, right, on Goodyear's. And we went there and went 16 eights, and I'll never forget this. Eddie Bellinger said, I've never went 16 eights, and Bentley looked at him and said, you will today, and he did. And the next thing you know, Bentley comes up to me and goes, this is all great. But he said, I want you to remember one thing. The faster you go in racing, the harder it is to pass. Mm-hmm. And he is 100% right to this day. One more question I wanted to sneak in. We only got a minute to go. I talked to some of the folks at Oswego. They said a lot of those Hoosier tires sit in a real hot warehouse building. And they actually go through heat cycles. True? No, that, that's really not true. Um, you know, when a tire's cured, it's over 350 degrees. So, so if that tire, isn't you know, do it. It, no, 120 degrees is not going to do it. I mean, shelf life, sitting in that container and giving it shelf life, that will definitely make the tire have better wear, for sure. You know, but I'll tell you, Mike Silliman, out of all of our dealers in the United States, Mike Silliman is probably one of the best at keeping the inventory rotating and making sure everybody keeps on the same type of stuff. And we'll He's talk to Mike in a minute because we are out of time, Irish. i got to make sure we do this every so often. So uh, I'll make sure that I keep in touch with you. Guys, if you have questions, call. Talk to Mike. Talk to Irish. <laughs> yeah. Talk to Hoosier. Talk to these guys. They know. Don't trust everybody that you hear all this stuff from. So you take care of yourself, man. I'll talk to you again soon. And stick around. i got something i got to ask you, okay? 
All right. Thank you, Doug. Hit the blue E, subscribe, like, share, because this is a good one. So make sure all your friends check this one out right here.